It is Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024. This is another edition of Football Today. Those are the dudes from well, all over the place. Our TPPs, our Talking Giants, they do everything football-related at the company. Justin Pennick, Bobby Skinner, I'm Chris Rose. Producer Mikey is putting the show together as well. Uh, Bobby, it looks like you got your fresh haircut for training camp. Is, is that what I see? Yeah, I wanted to rip the guy to the ground by his gauges because I said to leave a little of the front, and the first thing he does is just buzz right over the front. Um, mm, been there. You know, so um, not not happy about it, but I'm happy about training camp. Yeah, I know. I know. You're you're one of those dudes that cannot sleep because we're here now, Bobby. It's here. It's my favorite time of the year for uh, for football content. All right, good. We got a lot of stuff to get to. We're going to be grading some of our off-season stories and where we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10 and all sorts of stuff. But let's start with some of the bigger news out there, which is Jordan Love. As of the taping of this show, he is at Packers camp. He is participating on the field mentally. He is in the team meetings. He's just not putting on the pads until he gets that extension, which some people expect to be right around $50-plus million dollars a year. Panic! did the the Packers handle this thing right? Because he didn't, what what did you say? How many snaps did he have before becoming a starter last season? 157. 157, and now he's about to make 50 plus million dollars a year. If you're a Packers fan, can you be 100% all in on this move? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, it's, it's tough to swallow from the perspective of, you know, he's only had one one good year, but also that was very much by design. It wasn't that Jordan Love was on the bench because he wasn't good enough. It's because Jordan Love was on the bench because he had Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. So it's a tough dynamic where we talk about the the benefits of a quarterback sitting. Now, I think this is an extreme, extreme scenario where a quarterback is sitting for two years as to maybe as as opposed to one. Um, But I think everything that Jordan Love showed last year with the Packers being the youngest team in the NFL uh, the Packers, you know, even Christian Watson was was hurt at certain points last year. That defense is still, this is a young, young and upcoming team, and they've continued to make upgrades. They spent a little money this offseason on some free agents, too, so the team is going to be better. I think it, it, this is just the way that it goes in the NFL now, that, you're, that these quarterbacks are going to get. If you're good and you're in a category, you're going to get a AAV that starts with a five. I think you got to be confident and you got to be willing that Jordan Love can do it. Well, it's, it's, they're, it's better for them to do this now instead of waiting until the season happens and like, okay, is are we 100% sure he's the guy? But the way he finished the season was strong. And I'm someone who like, I need to, you know, I need to see a little bit more before I'm like fully sold that this guy's, you know, going to be a consistently a top, you know, you know, seven, eight quarterback in the NFL. But there was really no other alternative, right? This is why I don't even in, like – enjoy talking about quarterback contracts because it's like it's it's you're basically just saying do you want this guy to be your quarterback or not the money's not even worth discussing it's just do you want to be your quarterback or not if i'm the packers i want jordan love to be the quarterback it's better to do it now than wait and have to pay more a year from now i just think it's i understand your point bobby the thing that's shocking is that we've never seen somebody get this much money that hasn't accomplished a ton in the league really at the beginning of the Jimmy G did it and and that was that was a bad one but they even set that contract up halfway decent like he played what right 10 you know he played 10 starts and nowhere near showed any no anything anywhere near as good as what love has done um you know so it's 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 a damned if you do damned if you don't but I think they're they're smart to get it done I love the move it's just amazing do you know that what his career high in passing yards in a single game is Tell me. 322. He's had two 300-yard games. Two. And he's he's getting the jackpot. It's just it's just because of the way it worked out that you're going to see some numbers with Jordan Love that we haven't seen of guys that are getting this sort of dough. Because even with Jimmy G, like, what did he max out at? Was it low 20s? It always felt like it was. He reset the market. Like, it's you it can't con- compare the numbers. But right. he reset the market when he got his deal done. Yeah. So it's uh it's fascinating, you know, in the back half of the year he did not turn it over at all. I think he had one mm-hmm. interception in the last eight regular season games. He did great in the game against Dallas and then obviously in the San Francisco the way that ended wasn't a thing of beauty. But, you know, I would be 100% behind this if I were a Packers fan. I would feel great about it. So I think we could 
We can move on from this discussion. We all feel the same direction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, guys, I got a bunch of storylines, and I want you to, to grade them on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of interest. Um, so let's start with the Chiefs. Oh, you have eight storylines? Yeah, why? Did you come up with I thought we were all putting together our b- eight biggest storylines. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, so well, let's see how many you nailed on my list. You pr- I'm going to guess you have, like, two, because the way your football brain is, you're, you're way smarter than I am. I bet you two. No, mine are, you know, mine are, they're headlines. They're sto- or storylines, so it's not like, you know, how is the interior offensive line on this? Mike, I'll, I'll just rattle off my eight, see how many yeah. you, you have. You want to do Chiefs that Chiefs getting though? more explosive with Xavier Worthy and Hollywood Brown. Okay, well, it's similar to what I've got, but okay. Are the Dolphins paying Tua? Can no. the Jets stay healthy enough for Super Bowl run? Get run? Yeah. Is Bryce, similar. is Bryce Young simply going to be a bottom five QB? Uh, Russell Wilson versus Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Potential holdouts of IU, Cooper, and CeeDee Lamb. Okay. Uh, where do remaining free agents go? And then my last one was just the Bears because I'm, I'm really interested in the Bears team. So I think we got think half. We, uh, three for eight, yeah. Three or four for eight, yeah. Yeah, not bad. Panic, you didn't see the exercise that way. Was my email not clear enough? No, I, I, I did not prepare eight because Chris Rose prepared eight perfectly good things that I was very <laughs> happy and excited to talk about. Bobby, you're, are you the kid that used to do extra homework at home? Is this what I'm finding out about you? Yeah, Bobby's known for two. <laughs> no, I was the kid who was, school. you know, thinking up, you know, just the other day I was somewhere and I had a notebook and I just like started drawing up blitzes. That's, that's the way I am. Um, like, okay, if they, you know, do a full slide, this is how we're going to do this. If they do a half slide or, you know, how, how's the best way to protect? Anyways, what are your storylines, Chris Rose? <laughs> I'm just curious if you show that stuff to strangers, like, and if so, are they, are they calling the authorities? On I it? mean, in, in reality, I have, you know, 44,000 strangers that follow me on Twitter. So yes, <laughs> perfect. Well, the first one was about the chiefs and, uh, they're trying to become the first team to ever win three Super Bowls in a row. Uh, scale of one to ten, Panic. How interesting is that to you? I mean, this is up there because it's this is like eight nine because people hate teams that win all the time, right? Like the Chiefs, and I already think the Chiefs are a little bit hated, even though they mm. have guys on their team. They have guys on their team that they're kind of hard to hate. Andy Reid's a hard guy to hate. I don't think anybody hates Andy Reid. Patrick Mahomes, I even feel like he's a hard guy to hate. People mm-hmm. don't like Travis Kelsey because of Taylor Swift, which makes no sense. Um, but the Chiefs, if they're going to win more, then they're going to be hated. And that's what happened to the Pats. But here's the thing. They're better this year. And we talked about this during the postseason run that they had last year. That I think that version of the Chiefs team that we got last postseason, that was everybody else's shot. That was the Bills' shot. That especially was the Ravens shot. And now that those teams have kind of gotten worse and the Chiefs have gotten better in what they're doing, like Bobby said, adding that explosive element, or is Xavier Worthy and Brown, are they gonna or are they transforming wide receivers? No. But are they going but could they transform that offense to become more explosive? And we already know how explosive Patrick Mahomes is anyway. Yes. And that is what makes them better this year, and that is dangerous. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited to see what they do with those receivers. Even if there's some growing pains early on, how they, you know, how they mold that offense because we know they have a quarterback who can no matter what you throw at him, okay, I'm going to handle this the best. But they at the end of the day, they want to be a team that's explosive. They adjusted, right? Where last year's 30th in average depth of target, 10% deep throw rate, 23rd the year before, 9% deep throw rate where he was top 10 in those categories the first couple of his years and it was like it was backyard ball. And you even saw this was my number one storyline before you even saw the highlight that came out of training camp of Mahomes rolling to his left and finding finding Xavier Worthy. And you still have the guys who got them through last year, Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey. So those guys are still, you know, probably going to have a little more space with with that. So, and you, like you said, three straight Super Bowls, like you said, no team has ever done that, right? As in, And as we go and talk about it, like Mahomes, you know, trying, like, Actually having a chance to be the greatest of all time, that would be amazing to have three straight Super Bowls this early in his career and then adding a, and, you know, a fourth total. Well, I think because it opens up the discussion then to the greatest quarterback ever. And some people will say, well, we can't get there because Tom Brady has got seven rings. And, but to see what Mahomes has done before the age of 30, there's going to be all sorts of screaming morning shows and podcasts alike that will be 
taking that narrative and running through, uh, you know, the football fields with it. Um, for me, it's 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 high on the list, right? It probably starts off right now at the end of July is, you know, a seven, eight. But as we see them get better and they're going to win the division again, barring a Mahomes injury, and then they're going to have some home playoff games like last year was the big test. Like we didn't Patrick Mahomes had never played a road playoff game until he went to Buffalo last year. And he was like better than ever. <laughs> right. Well, they, people you know, said they weren't Super Bowl contenders after the Raiders game. Yes. Right. And um, those people were idiots. I was probably one of them, I'm guessing. So, you know, the, the, he, they passed all of those tests. Now, just as far as a history lesson, very quickly, there are eight teams that have won back-to-back Super Bowls, okay? Uh, the Packers, they, they won the first two. Uh, Miami did it early on. Pittsburgh twice. I want to focus on the last four because these happened in the last 35 years. The 05 Patriots, they went 10 and 6. They lost to Denver in the divisional round. The 99 Broncos, the year after Elway retired, 6 and 10, did not make the playoffs. 94 Cowboys, they probably came the closest, one of the closest. Uh, they lost the NFC title game to San Francisco that year in Steve Young. And then at 1990, the Niners lost the NFC championship game to whom, boys? The New York football Giants. That's right. The New York Giants. Matt Barr with a late field goal to send them to the Super Bowl down there in Tampa. Way to go and way to celebrate. Um, and so probably it was the Niners that that was. The, I think that was the game where Joe Montana got lit up. Yeah. Yeah. And Leonard Marshall. You know, Leonard Marshall hit him and fumbled the ball. And so uh, teams have come close. They've come to the title games. But they've never been able to push through and make that third straight Super Bowl as a you know, consecutive defending champions. Yeah, and it, it's not some, like, cakewalk or anything, but it is, like, they've won back-to-back Super Bowls, and you can make a pretty decent argument that they've gotten, like, significantly better, especially especially on offense. The defense, we'll see how they are without Legereus need, but you expect them yep. to at least figure, you know, be de- you know, at least be a- above average, and then you have a more explosive QB. Like, you know, they had real issues last year on offense, right? Like, you talk about mm-hmm. second-half scoring, they were bottom of the league, so... um you know, I, I think they're in a really good place to be that first team to do it. I think, yeah, And I'm really interested to see what they do at tackle as well. And that's something that we'll talk about when we get to their TPP. But um, they they had a they have a tackle issue. And then even they had and have because Jawan Taylor is still on the team. And uh, that's certainly how Mahomes is going to navigate that if they want to throw the ball downfield more. And if they if Mahomes wants to hold on to the ball more, that dynamic is going to be really Interesting, too. They do have a huge advantage from this standpoint. It reminds me a little bit of the Patriots during their run where they never got a great push from anybody else in their division. They got one team that does have a quarterback in the Chargers and a superior head coach in Jim Harbaugh, but they still are lacking some things. And then they've got two teams in their division that they don't know what they're doing at quarterback right now. So I think that that's a huge advantage for the Chiefs, certainly. Um. Next one, Aaron Rodgers. And you had this, Bobby, kind of on your list. Coming back from an Achilles injury and trying to end the Jets playoff drought, which happens to be the longest in the NFL going right now. What is your interest level on that scale of 1 to 10? Uh, I'll, say, I'll say 8 because, again, it's, it's very hard to be a Super Bowl winning team. But they should be Super Bowl contenders on paper. But, again, that offensive side of the football, you have a lot of guys – with injury, you know, or Aaron Rodgers coming off a torn Achilles, Elijah Veras, uh Tecker, you know, torn Achilles, torn tricep the year before. Tyron Smith, thirty-six of the last sixty-seven games out, hasn't played thirteen over thirteen games since twenty fifteen. Brees Hall, uh, he tore his ACL two years ago. Mike Williams coming off a torn ACL. You just, it's like it's right there for the Jets, but they just have to stay semi healthy, right? You need three of those five guys. To, to be playing when it matters the most. And you're probably hoping Mike Williams, if there's one guy that gets injured, it's probably Mike Williams. This is a 10 for me because this is a 12 or 13 win football team. Mm. Should be. Should be. I, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, the injuries, yeah. I, I think everybody knows that. We all, we all recognize that. This is a 12, 13 win football team. Um, they have... The NFL, yeah, the NFL doesn't do you favors on who you play because that's decided, but they did him favors. Everything is set up. Everything is set up for the Jets to have an immaculate, immaculate year because really the roster 
is that good. Aaron Rodgers doesn't even need to be what Aaron Rodgers was like 2020, 2021, where, you know, the back-to-back MVP seasons. Doesn't even need to fully be that. So even if he's not fully back from the Achilles, the rest of the roster should be able to get them to where they want to go. Man. Um, I think this is the first time that some of those guys are going to be playing with a ton of pressure. The minute Rodgers went down on that first drive last year, the season changed and um, everything went to shit. And so now you're dealing with the pressure of playing with Aaron Rodgers, where every snap is under a microscope. You're already playing with the pressure of being in New York and a team that's got the longest playoff draft going, where we're talking about 15 seasons almost. Um, I'm fascinated by every aspect of this. Now, Rodgers did go on Pardon My Take, and he did have his first words about missing the mandatory part of camp. And he said that it's kind of an arbitrary area where they they don't tell you right at the beginning, but they say this is going to be the mandatory part, that it could be here for some teams and this part for other teams. He's like, I made it for the first 10 practices, and I missed those two. It'll be interesting when he gets in front of a full room of New York media and gets pressed on that. And They're not going to he... press them. They're soft. You think they won't press them, huh? I know they won't. They're soft. I have like te- I text with people back and forth after Aaron Rodgers press conference because they never. Which this is a little the small deal. I'm talking about other like bigger deals with Rodgers. Yeah. Um. This is the last one question about it. He'll answer and then they'll move on. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm fascinated from the standpoint of it, which is why I would call it a seven or eight out of the gate. Because I do want to see how close they are to Buffalo. I, I, I really do. It just, you know, they've been 7-10 and 10 with such shitty quarterback play the last few years. Yeah, like awful. some of the worst in the league. So now you're thinking, well, with everything else that's in place, maybe Aaron Rodgers isn't a four-time MVP anymore, but he sure as hell is going to be laps better than what we've seen. Well, yeah, right? when we, talk, we talk about the Broncos QB room and how, you know, you have Bo Nix, but it's, you know, Jared, like, their starting quarterback last year is probably going to get cut from the Denver Broncos uh, team this year. That we have what thirtieth in our power <laughs> rankings, Justin. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just, and it wasn't just like, oh, he's bad. It was like he just doesn't know what to do at all. Um, so yeah, though I, I think they set themselves up in a good spot to where they'll at least be a playoff team. You know, if as long as Rodgers doesn't miss the entire season, but if he misses a four game stretch, you have Tyrod as a backup. Getting, you know, drafting Olu Fashinu if Tyron Smith goes down. Um, it's just, but this team should have Super I mean, this team is, it's Super Bowl or bust for them in reality because of how short this window is with the Rodgers. And, right. and Chris, you were, you were talking about like the pressure uh-huh. of, of dealing with pressure. I think this is a team, and, you know, listening to New York sports radio and being here, I think this is a team that is going to thrive off of that pressure. This is no shit, Sherlock. If things are going well, if things are going well, if Rodgers is healthy, if they're winning games, even if they have a big game against the Bills next week, oh my God, they're going to take advantage of it. They're going to be ready to go. And I think they're going to be fired up and they're going to play really well. But the second that maybe some adversity hits and there's a, maybe a fork on the road, like an Aaron Rodgers injury, something like that. That's where I'm going to be interested, interested to see where do the New York Jets go? Because They've been a team over the years where they'll have a big, you know, even think of week one. Everybody is watching that game. The football world is focused on Aaron Rodgers carrying the American flag out of MetLife, you know, for Met, out of MetLife Stadium. No, we're not doing, we're not doing that again, by the way, Panic. We, uh-uh, that's not happening. No, no, what I'm just saying, the, the entire world was watching that's and then true. he goes down and then what did they do? They won. They won the football game, you know, and then after that, it all kind of it all kind of crumbled, and there was the back and forth of if if Wilson's the guy, can he do it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think if things start going their way, even if they have a big game against whatever team the upcoming week, it's going to be fun and it's going to be good. But when that fork in the road comes, how are they going to respond? And that's the question that I have. And then if and when they get to the playoffs, how Aaron Rodgers plays because that's been a question. That has been a question at times in Green Bay. All right, uh, you talk about playing with pressure. Uh, for the first time in decades, the Lions are actually the hunted in their division. How interested are you in seeing if they can handle that pressure, Panic? I think they're they're going to because they're. I love the Eagles roster, and you know that's the, that's something that I've talked about time and time again. I think Bobby and I are, are are really behind that, probably because we see them twice a year. 
But I, I think the Lions, what they did in the draft this offseason, and even adding Kevin Zeitler to an already to what was already the best offensive line in the NFL, I think they have just the best overall roster in the league. And it's almost making me rethink my whole what? I don't know. I think the Lions. What are they? A better roster than the 49ers? Yes. Cool. Because the 49ers do not have a it, it, for me, it comes down to O line, D line, and all right, you can make. Hey, I'll, I'll sit here and Forty Niners D line's better and their fronts better. Yeah, but I think their O line is that much better, and I think that matters a lot more. Yeah, the Forty Niners. The Forty Niners just have all pros at every every single position group at every level, and a quarterback who's like has the most EPA per play in like NFL history. Um, because of that all pro, you know, surrounding is and him running that offense the way it should be ran. Um, the thing with the Lions is it's not like, are they better or, or, you know, are they a contender? It's just their division is a lot stronger now. So like, what do they mm-hmm. end up, you know, total wins, losses, or could they, you know, be playing on the road in the second round compared to, you know, a, a home game? Uh, because the Packers are better than what they were last year. The bears have made significant increases and even the Vikings, if, McCarth or whoever you know they should have better QB play than what they had for over half the season last year with Do- you know uh, Dobbs and and Mullins that's the thing is that and we've mentioned this on this show before the first that the NFC schedule. North it's not only that but it's the NFC North that 18 months ago you were like ew like the minute Rodgers got traded you're like what is going to happen with that division it's going to be a horrible watch and now you virtually have to tune into every game um, that it's it's become that deep, right? We all believe in the Packers. I think I have them maybe the highest ranked out of the three of us. Uh, we all think that the Bears are going to have a shot at the playoffs. And then Minnesota, for a fourth-place team going into the year, like that's a pretty damn good fourth-place team. It's not the Carolina Panthers, for instance. Like Going into Minnesota when you're the Lions will not be an easy trek at all. So that's the thing. They could have a worse record than last year and be a better team. Um, but as far as the pressure and stuff, I, I don't think there's – I don't know. How many, te- how many people do you think are predicting the Lions to win the Super Bowl or even be in it? I don't think it's a big percentage. Do you guys? Probably like two out of ten people. You think it's that high, huh? That high? It's, well, yeah. it's, it's the 49ers are the favorite in the NFC. The Chiefs are the favorite right. in the- AFC, so it's just about getting there. It's like the teams in the NFC, the 49ers, the Eagles, and the Lions are really the, and I guess the Packers are are getting up in there. It's like the four teams that right. people can get behind as Super Bowl Super Bowl candidates. Yeah, so I think that's so what it is. So they're one of four in the NFC, which and then you know, I, I mean, they're not my pick, but I, I don't think I'd be surprised at all. No, but I don't no. think that the that there's that many people. There are a lot of people who are like, man, the Lions are fun to watch. They've got a great energetic coach. They seemingly have really good players at virtually every position. But I like the Niners a lot more. So I don't think anybody's like, yeah, I got to be on that Lions bandwagon. I think there's still a kind of a wait and see attitude. So I don't even think there's a ton of pressure on them, to be honest with you. I don't think. That's why I, I say it's like a five. five there, there's pressure from at least from the Detroit, like because they're – I mean, they 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 haven't tasted anything like this in ever. So like they, you know, there will there will be pressure from you know within that within that city. Uh, but overall, you know, I mean, but at the same time, like yeah, we may not pick them versus the Forty ers or the Chiefs, but I mean they were this close, right? Mm-hmm. So like they have a Super Bowl or bust mentality in that in that uh, facility. Yeah, but I, I do think- I, I do think that there's a- ton of pressure that comes from every local media group on every football team true but they're no longer they're no longer the darling you know then now they're the team that it's it's how sports work Mm -hmm. um you know your first year up we love you we're excited for you you don't live up quite to expectations in year two and now we're you know you're frauds and all that shit (laughs) um you know so it's it'll be interesting to see how they deal with it but they'll do you think there's any chance they don't win the division? Yes. I, I, I think Green Bay can be that good. I think with that entire 
skill group growing up together. I'm I'm really interested to see um where they go. You know, I I think there's a possibility. Yeah. I don't I, th- I think the Lions are finishing first in the conference this year. First like, in the I conference. Think they, have, they have they have the one seed and they're getting the bye. Wow. You're not worried about the depth of that division, huh? No. Well, I, yes, it, it's it's a good division and you know, especially I think whoever has the best record in the against their division, you know, the, that'll be a, one of the main deciders how close like the standings are. Um but I just think the lines are that much set up for success. And continuity is such a hard thing to come by in the NFL where now that you have Dan Campbell fully here, Ben Johnson stayed. Ben Johnson did not get a head coaching job like a lot of people thought and having him for yet another year. What is it? Would this be his third year? That's very rare for an offensive coordinator to be in one spot for three years in a row. I think it's like him, like Mike Kafka for the Giants three years in a row. It's rare to have these this, the same play caller year in and year out. And he's very good at it. Okay. Interesting. All right, we're taking a break from football today, and we got to talk about DraftKings. And here we go. I'm going to paint you a situation. Bottom of the night, two outs. The bases are loaded, and you're down by three, and the crowd is on their feet. And the drama of baseball is real, and so is all the action. With our partners over at the DraftKings Sportsbook, and right now, all new customers, if you just bet $5 on anything in the app, you will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. And also on this very channel, JM Football, if you tune in today, we have a live stream on July 23rd from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, I will be in it. My friend Jolly Olive will be in it. Shelfie will be in it. Joe's McFly will be in it. And Jake Storielli will be in it. We're doing a best ball draft. That's daily fantasy sports for you. Uh, best ball draft, NFL fantasy football draft. I bet you it's going to be the first fantasy football draft that you're going to see go down. So 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. today on the JM Football channel. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with us. Right now, new customers use promo code Football Today. That's all one word. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 back. In bonus bets instantly. That's promo code football today only at the DraftKings Sportsbook, and you'll be glad you did. Uh, let's move on to this one. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, always ranked as two of the top four or five quarterbacks in a, you know, in a given year. Uh, but neither has gotten to a Super Bowl. How interested are you in seeing how the narrative on them shifts if they do not get to football's holy grail yet again, Bobby? Um. With Allen, I I don't care because he's been so amazing in the playoffs, right? You know, they're, yeah, they haven't gotten it done, but you you go watch Josh Allen's playoff performances and they're stellar outside of, you know, the one game versus Cincinnati uh, in 2022. With Lamar, I am because, like, he hasn't been his best in the playoffs, right? Like, last year they had the win versus the Texans, but... You know that that was that was not a good game uh, versus versus the Chiefs in the conference championship, and like Justin pointed out earlier, that was their shot. They were way more talented that Kansas City Chiefs team, um, and they've lost some guys. So with Lamar, I'm more interested in it because we haven't seen just stellar playoff performances um, with him. But I think that conversation is already like full go with Lamar. It's just yeah, people without- people are afraid to talk about it because the biggest attractors of Lamar suck yeah yeah they're assholes um that was that was mean i mean it's like uh josh allen i don't think it's going to change that much but both of them their situations i think have gotten worse but especially for lamar i think it's going to impact him more i have we've talked about it i have major major questions about the offensive line listen i, I think odell is or he's no longer overrated, but at least him signing with the Ravens last year, that was an overrated move, and then you saw the results, but they did lose him. Who is, is Zay Flowers going to step up to be this number one receiver in the NFL? Is Rashad Bateman going to stay healthy for a second year in a row? So I think Lamar's situation, Lamar will still be good, but Lamar's situation around him may fail him a little bit, and then I think in turn that's going to impact the narrative that is shaped around him. Like who 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 do you have more confidence in with their current rosters, Rose? Allen or Lamar? Uh God. I think Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen. 
Yeah, and but, and I I agree too, right? Like where it's like they lost Stefan Diggs, and you're still like, okay, I think I think they'll be all right. Dalton Kincaid yeah. will be a good option for them. You know, they you know they'll spread the ball around. They'll kind of lean into James Cook a little more. Um, with Lamar, the offense is like, okay, how how are we gonna look behind this offensive line? Because there are there are lows that that Lamar Jackson has had, where I, Allen I think is that- just like, hey, he has. A good amount of turnovers, but he's also just like top of the league and everything else. I do think that Todd Monk had screwed that up beyond belief last year. I think if they, you know, what the running backs run it six times in the AFC Championship game against the Chiefs, that's inexcusable. Sorry, with but Henry you, and with Henry, they should lean into the run a little more, right? Like yeah, Henry. Like, so I, I, I don't think the Ravens are going to have some collapse this year, but they are a worse roster than they were last year. How will how will they adjust? And they are in, uh, you know, football's toughest division. Um, I will say this about Lamar. Something, he looks like a totally different player when the playoffs start. He just does. He does not look free and easy at all. And in his playoff career, he has accounted for, through the air and on the ground, nine touchdowns. He has also turned it over nine times. It is virtually impossible to have a one-to-one scoring to turnover ratio as a quarterback and do well in the playoffs. And so a lot of that is on him and he's got to be better when we get to, when we get to January, he just has not been anything close to a two-time league MVP. And by the way, you know who else we heard about this for? You guys are probably too young, but Peyton Manning did not reach the Super oh, yeah. Bowl until his ninth season. And he was and bad in the playoffs. Like it wasn't just a narrative of like, cases. Oh, he can't, like it, it wasn't like Josh Allen where it's like, oh, he'll get like he was he had really bad playoff. He was a really bad playoff performer, like ugly, ugly right. games. So I, I view Lamar kind of in a similar situation right now where it's like, hey, we know you're great. No denying that you're a two time MVP, but you get held to another standard. You got to step up in the biggest moments. Yeah, there were some some of those games where. Peyton, I remember he had a three interception game, I want to say three or four interception game against the Patriots. And people were wondering like out loud, like, okay, you you know, he had won two MVPs before he got to his first Super Bowl. So it is, it's parallel tracks. They might've gotten it done differently, but you're talking about now parallel tracks with Lamar Jackson at this point. And he's, that's why it is a very interesting, like once again, scale of one to 10, I would grade it like an eight or a nine going into the season. Yeah, it, it's it's really you know you think and you think of Lamar like I don't his first year that doesn't I don't judge him on that, but year no. two when he wins the MVP, you know get get worked by the Titans only score twelve points you know like he said he had two picks in that game, then the next year they lose to the to the Bills only score three points and they lost the game on a on a pick six in the red zone at the end of the game to tie it up, um and then was injured the la- the two years after that and then last year ten points versus the Chiefs, um. You know, took a lot of sacks, had that interception at the end, you know, towards the end of the game. Um, so, yeah, he's he, he needs to step up in the playoffs. All right, here we go. Another storyline. Caleb Williams is trying to join Andrew Luck as the only quarterbacks drafted number one overall to get their team to the playoffs. How much does that interest you on a scale of one to ten, Panic? Oh, it's, it's up there. I feel like everything I've said is a ten, eight or nine. Oh. Um, so maybe- what you're saying is I nailed it on these questions. You you did. You did. But I overall feel we even said this as the draft was nearing, too. Caleb Williams has been the number one overall pick for such a long time now. Caleb Williams has been a Chicago Bear ever since we knew that mm. the Carolina Panthers gifted the Chicago Bears the number one overall pick. Right. Uh, so it's been like we've known this. We've known that Caleb Williams is going to be there. We know that he was going to be in Chicago. I feel like the hype has like kind of died down a little bit, and I, I want Caleb to bring it back. If I if I had to watch a one p.m. game, uh, other than the game that I'm going to be at, the Vikings versus Giants game, if I had to be at any game, it honestly would be Titans at Bears Week One, and then hello, we're gonna get Week Two where the Bears are gonna be at the Houston Texans on Sunday Night Football. So holy shit, cannot wait for that. Um, Bobby and I are like pseudo Bears fans this year. They've Are always been like my little brother team. Uh, anyways, I've always just kind of, for some reason, just root for sure. But yeah, they're, again, they are, you asked me on a week-to-week basis, what team would I like to watch is going to be the Chicago Bears because of, you know, because of Caleb Williams, because of the talent they have on offense, because of the, you know, the 
the stars on defense they have like Jalen Johnson and then young guys rising like Tyreek Stevenson. Um, their their group I'm I'm super. I mean, like I said, I I put together my list of eight. One was was simple, just the Bears. Uh, for me, it is a ten. I am pegging it. Uh, sometimes I do get into the uh, hyperbole area, but I really believe in this because not only is it a number one pick going to a team that won seven games a year ago, but he can change the entire identity of a franchise, right? For the longest time, for my entire lifetime, the Chicago Bears have been about running the football and playing defense. I mean, that dates back to Walter Payton running the ball in the 70s, doing amazing things. And then when they did eventually start to get really good in the 80s, it was all about defense. Like he can change. They've never had a 4,000 yard passer in a single season. They've had two quarterbacks that they have drafted that have made the Pro Bowl Jim McMahon in the 80s and Mitchell Trubisky. But that's only because like the first 10 guys in the NFC pulled out and didn't want to go to the Pro Bowl that year. So they've never had a guy like this that can put his stamp on an organization and change things. I did a little exercise, and I don't know if we did this before on the show, guys, but in the last 20, I just cut it off at 25 years ago. So starting in 99, a quarterback has been taken number one overall now 18 times, if you include Caleb Williams. The only guys, in my opinion, who surpass him talent-wise coming into the league on that list are Vic, Cam, Luck, and I would probably throw Carson Palmer in there. I just love the way that Carson Palmer threw the ball. I know it's a different. We play football differently now than we did in 2003 when he came out. But still, those are the four guys. And, I'm, and I think I could probably even make an argument for Williams sliding up a little bit. I just yeah. – am I off base here, Bobby, with that evaluation? You forgot um, Jared Goff. Uh, no, not no. You are you are not. And again, there he's being put on a team that wasn't the worst in the NFL, right? And not only were they not the worst in the NFL, they had the ninth overall pick to go right. with it, uh, and they added to him, right? And then make a, a nice trade for Keenan Allen and a team that was, you know, they were the ninth worst team in the NFL based on it. But they they really grew in the second half of that season, right? When they added Montez Sweat, when young guys like Tyreek Stevenson started playing better. Um, you know, so I, I'm all in on the Bears. Now it's going to be tough to make the playoffs, though, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I I kind I said earlier in the off season I think they're going to do it, but then when you start going through the schedule and picking every single game, yep. it's yep. tough. And I landed with them at nine and eight. Um, so it's going to be tough for them to make the playoffs because we mentioned the Lions and the Packers in that division. Um, there's uh, some other tough games. You know, you know Sunday Night Football week two, like Justin just mentioned versus the Texans. So it's a uh, it's not an easy go for them, but. I, I believe they'll be over 500 at least. All right, uh, let's move on to this. And we have talked about it several times in the offseason, but it is a pretty big story still. Dak, in his walk year, um, without the ability for the Dallas Cowboys to franchise him at season's end. So, Bobby, how interesting is it that this could be Prescott's last run in the Lone Star State? Uh, at this point, it's a one for me. One? Agreed, because he's going to be a Cowboy. Doesn't it doesn't get it doesn't get interesting until the season's over for me. You you think he's definitely a Dallas Cowboy? No, he yes. can't be franchise tag. He may want to move off, but it's more it's very likely that he's going to be a Dallas Cowboy. So it just doesn't it and it doesn't interest me even in the season. It's like once the season's over, yeah, that could be story number one. But right now, I'm not interested in that at all. I actually do want to hear Stephen Jones went on um a Diana Rossini pod mm-hmm. recently that uh that I wanted. Did, did you listen to it, Chris? I, I want to listen yet. to it on my way home. I, I got to listen to it on my way home because I think I, he talked about managing fan expectations and managing the Dak Prescott situation, which uh, I would just love to hear Stephen Jones just talk about that, even if he says nothing, just how he kind of presents it, right? I, I think he's going to be a cowboy. Uh, like, they're not going to pay him like a record number in, in dead cap. Like, they're not going to do what, what the Broncos just did to Russell Wilson. They're not going to do that and pay him all that money to not be on the football team. Two, two totally different situations for the Broncos and the Cowboys, and Dak's just, like, better. Better. But he has so much leverage, though. So much leverage. So this will be the first time in probably four years where I do not go to Cowboys camp unless I just drive out there on my own. It's just the schedule didn't work out that way. And this is the one year I really wanted to be there because I was curious to see 
what all the local media felt about this story. Because I do think that nationally, I think a lot of people see it, Penick, the way that you do. Like, it's not a story once we start playing football until what if he has the same exact year that he had last year and finishes runner up in the MVP again? And then all of a sudden, then what sort of number are we looking at? Because there's going to be some team that would be interested in his services next year. I mean, for God's sakes, Kirk Cousins, who's, what is he, five or five years older than Dak? Just got a hundred and some million guaranteed. So what's Dak going to get? A number that nears six or even 60. Uh, I think mid. I think in sixties, I think it's possible ba- just based on his situation, based on that's where all the leverage comes from. There's no way the Cowboys could let him walk out the door if he has another really good season. Yeah, and that's why the fran- no franchise tag is in his favor, and I think that's why there's not a deal done it's because he can't be franchise tagged. So you guys both have it as a one. See, when the season's over, it it goes, it shoots up. Right now, I got no interest in it. Okay. I have a little bit of interest because I do want to see because that part of the you will be hearing that part of the narrative. I, I mean, you're going to hear it so much about. But what, what are they going to do? Worry. Choke in the playoffs again because of it? They already do that every year. <laughs> oh boy, I'm going to say it's at least a five. I'll put it on that. Yeah. By the way, just curious, where do you have Dak ranked all time among Cowboys quarterbacks that you have either have? Decent knowledge about you guys never saw Roger Staubach play. I, I caught him in the back end of his career. Troy Aikman, Tony Romo. That's probably the list of. Yeah. Is he better than Romo? I loved. That's tough. I loved hating. They're so I loved similar. Hating watching Romo play. They're really so similar. And also Dak Prescott has had the benefit now of not having Jason Garrett where Romo had the unfortunate experience of having Jason Garrett for his, the entirety of his career. Better be careful. You know, he went to my high school. Sorry. When's the reunion? I've known. Jason, I've known <laughs> we just had it in just May. Want to talk. I couldn't make it. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to show up. We have something to say. Just want to talk <laughs> to him. Um, uh, anyone? Anyone have? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. This is bad radio. Is, is, he, is he better or worse than Romo? Better. Romo Penick? had a lot. You know, we talk about playoff, you know, lack of playoff success for Dak, but there was a lot of lack of regular season success towards the end of the year for Romo with some really bad. I mean, it seemed like every single year the, the Cowboys season ended at eight and eight with Dak throwing an intercept or Romo throwing an interception on Sunday Night Football. I think Romo might be. I'm going to say Romo. I think Romo was actually. Better in some of the bigger moments, even though he did have a lot of choke worthy moments, too. This is probably for a different show, but I don't know why the the Romo hate was so much out there. Guy was freaking undrafted out of eastern Illinois. And he ended up having a great career. Oh, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know, from 2010 to 13, which is right in the middle of his career, they went one and five, he got injured in those games. Eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and seven. And then the tw- that one great year in 2014, um, you know, years where he led the league in interceptions. It just, it, I mean, he's, re- you know, we're talking about two really good players. It's just when your seasons end like that, that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. That's very similar to Dak right now, where it's like Dak is an awesome yeah. quarterback, but the playoffs, like at some point we have to start, a, we, the conversation needs to be about his playoff performances. Okay, let's move on. We've got eight new head coaches. Uh, None bigger than the return of Jim Harbaugh to the NFL. Interest level on how much of a difference he will make year one with the Los Angeles Chargers, Panic. I am extremely interested, and I'll I'll put it out of seven. That's a number that nobody has said yet. There you go. Danica Danica Patrick in the Nationwide Series. Um, I'll put it there because just from a football standpoint, and like I'm a big analytics guy too, I just want to see if Jim Harbaugh coming back to the NFL and Greg Roman and what we were doing 10 years ago. And we do know like the running game is making a resurgence in the NFL as teams are playing more too high. And as defenses are playing way more, I'm going to keep everything in front of me. So we don't allow the big explosive play. So 
the running game is making a renaissance in the NFL, but is it going to make a Jim Harbaugh renaissance in the NFL? And with such a talented passer of just like Justin Herbert, are you going to take the ball out of his hands so much to the point that is a that it is a detriment to the offense mm. um, than as opposed to a pro? You know, because you you know, hey, Colin Kaepernick and Alex Smith, no no offense, no Justin Herbert. I want I am a person who wants the ball in his hands as much as possible. How will that dynamic work, um, and how will they want to attack with having a guy like Justin Herbert? Will it be as run heavy as it was ten years ago? Bobby, you're all in on Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, this this interest level to me is a five because I already know he's going to turn it around. Oh. They're winning double digit games this year. There's not a, like I don't have any wow. doubt in my mind. You you think they're going to win double digit games because I, of him? Absolutely. Why are you it, so confident? Because he's done it every single time, and now he has a great quarterback every single time. The six did we think the six and 10 49ers would be in the NFC Championship game? They were. We you know every, every single place he goes, he turns it around immediately. They're going to have a top five rushing offense. Greg Roman's never been worse than fourth in rushing in the NFL. Um, they have that quarterback. They're they're going to they're going to be a double digit win team this year. There's not a doubt in my mind. So I'm not. Even, I'm I'm interested, but it's not it's not even intriguing for me because I know it's going to happen. He can be maddening at times, but I do find him very very interesting. Like if he were to make an entire list of the most interesting people in the NFL this year, I think he's pretty high on that list. Now, with the Chargers, last year they played 7 games where which were decided by 3 points or less. Anybody want to guess their record in those 7 games? Uh Two and five, because I know they beat the Vikings on one of those games, I think. I'm going to go one and six. I believe they were 0 and seven, but probably my math is off now. Um, at any rate, they lost seven games where they by three points or less. A lot of that can come down to coaching, little things. I did reach out to somebody in the Chargers organization, and I said, so what's the deal? Well, like, what's the vibe around here? Are people kind of walking on eggshells? Is this a Nick Saban sort of deal with the Dolphins? He's like, no, everybody's bought in. The veterans have bought in. And so the minute you hear that the veterans are in now, granted, it's the end of July. We haven't had any sort of issues so far. We haven't even put on pads. But um, to hear that the veterans are in. That's a big step. And why not? Jesus, I mean, look at the shit show it's been with their head coaching situations over the last few years. I mean, it looked like those were the first time that Brandon Staley had ever been in a fourth down situation before. He's like, huh, coin flip. What do we do? So there's not a, there's not a single team in the NFL where their 2023 or even before that matters less than the Los Angeles chargers, because there's just a new energy. There's a new GM in there. They had a really good draft. I mean, uh, you know, we, we were doing, you know, but we did our, their TPP. And, you know, one of the things that we said there is, it just doesn't matter. Throw away like, you know, 2023. Usually, Throw it away. Usually we'll talk about their stats and how that year went and overall what happened. It literally does not matter because everything is so new. And that roster, I think, as really next year is really going to turn over even more than what it was this past year. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's totally fair. Uh, last one that I've got on my list. Your interest level, Bobby, in Tom Brady calling games on Fox? I'll say four because I'm really excited for it, but at the end of the day, the announcers just don't make that much of a difference for me. But I think he's going to be great at it. Do you think he is? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. Why wouldn't, you know, why wouldn't he? You know, they all, you know, we talked, you know, we talked about like some of his uh radio spots that he's done talking about, you know, quarterbacks today and stuff. Uh you know, ho hopefully he just doesn't fall into the like, oh, everything's OK. This isn't as bad as people are, you know, doesn't. You know, hopefully he's not afraid of, of harsh criticism because I, that's the part I'm excited for. And I think that's the part we, that we lose in today's broadcasting with the social media age of no one wanting to read tweets, mean tweets about them. I'll put it at an 8.5 because of David Tyree's helmet catch. Um, ah, I think he's going to be great. Like, uh, here, I was a little like, oh, I really liked Craig Olson, and Bobby's going to roll his eyes because, like, uh, Tom Brady over. Like, I get it. You want to. Craig Olson put just Brady. repeated Twitter, football Twitter talking points. But guess what? I like that. And I yeah, really that's why media that. loves it. 
You didn't like you don't like Greg Olson? No, I do. I just think the fawning over him was a little much. It, it was because it's we do this with everyone who like says things that football Twitter talks about a lot, and so it's like he's just like me. Like I remember Brandon Staley. Brandon Staley was football Twitter's darling his first year in Los Angeles because he's like, well, we go for the fourth down because of the analytics and we need a physicality in the run defense. That's why we, you know, we we play the run. Like it was, he just repeated football Twitter talking points and everyone crowned him the greatest of all time. What is the number one talking point out there in the Twitterverse right fourth, now? The fourth down going. It's basically is that going, still the biggest thing? I've retired. I've re- I don't do it anymore. I I, I, I root can't for do fourth it. down to not work because of how annoying it is. You uh, can't do it. You can't you hear. It's like here. Here's like probability. What are all these models that people develop? And it's like this is why it makes sense to to do it to go for it to be aggressive. You can even explain it with logic and reason. Of like, hey, you know, why is it more beneficial to force an offense to go 95 yards drive down the field as opposed to kicking a field goal and then you're giving them 25 yards? Like, you have to force them to go the extra 20. And, you know, no, you can't. It's no arguing anymore. I'm done. So if Tom Brady starts talking about the analytics that are on the screen, is that going to make you uh, more joyful or are you going to want to puke? No, here's the thing. I want to hear what Tom Brady has to say. Like if Tom Brady, if, you know, the greatest quarterback of all time, it, and how he processes and how he thinks about the game, if he's saying that, oh, I, the, the, like, oh, this is something that makes sense, this is something that I like, or oh, even this is something that I never looked at, but it makes sense and it's in line with my process, I want to hear Tom Brady's process. It's like I almost don't, I almost don't, almost don't even want to hear Tom Brady call the game. I just want to hear him react to the game uh-huh. and then, is it in line with what he does? Well, but that's the <laughs> that's the big deal is that some people cannot stand. When it's the back in my day philosophy, but because we just didn't get a ton of that from Tom Brady throughout his career, because he had to keep his mouth shut uh, in New England all those years, it felt it did feel like a totally different Tom Brady when he got to Tampa in terms of the way that he could talk about things. So yeah, and we're two years removed from he's obviously very updated on on the game, um, and maybe ten years from now, yeah, it's like. All right, dude, we we just don't play quarterback that way anymore. But early on, I think it should be really good. By the way, I'm also like – I'm mostly in the go for it on fourth down conversation. Mm-hmm. I just don't act like it's this no-brainer decision and human emotion and, you know, you know, like I think that stuff actually matters and you can't simply just say go for it every damn time. Uh, but it's just – it's very funny seeing people melt down about that every time. Well, the thing I hate about it is that you're a moron – if you have a contrarian view or just the opposite view, it doesn't even have to be contrarian, just, just the opposite view. But that's where we are in the world. Like, yeah. if there's disagreement, then obviously you're an idiot because you're not smart enough to think about it this way. Like, fuck it, it's football at the end of the day. <laughs> We're talking about going for it on fourth and three from the 46. Don't call me a fucking moron because I'm trying to do something that I think is best for my team. Like, Jesus, enough with that shit. Although I would like to hear Tom Brady come out and say, I think you're a fucking moron if you don't go for it. <laughs> Just once, wouldn't you like to? And by the way, well, shouldn't we be allowed to swear on broadcasts now? Haven't we hit that point? Well, I was just about to ask, what What do you, because Tom Brady's not going to get fired from Fox if he drops an F-bomb week one. No, but the, so what, the network what, will get fined. What would be the worst thing that he would have to say to be fired from from that job? I don't want to go down that road. <laughs> What's going through your <laughs> really? head right now, Justin, as you ask that yeah, question? Don't, don't, it's the same thing that'll make this your last ever show of John Boy Media. So <laughs> don't true. do it. Don't do it. I really, I want to hear, because don't you want to hear people saying, that's fuck, what, if, what the fuck was he thinking? Yeah, that's why I'm excited because, for Brady, because I think he's going to call that stuff out. But he won't say, what the fuck were you thinking? Yeah, he, I don't need him to cuss as long as he's just saying it Why? We're huh? all doing the same thing when we're watching the games. Well, I'm saying That's I don't care if he cusses or not. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything for me. Have you ever slipped up? Also, people that like cuss, Chris? like the people. Anyways, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You finish your point and then I'll get to well, it. Well, some people just don't sound natural. Like if you're cursing just for the fact, of, and I, I curse. But I think some people just do it to like, hey, look at me. I'm, yeah. I'm edgy. And you could tell. You could tell who's naturally dropping 20 F-bombs a sentence or who's trying to be like, I'm fucking mad. And it's just yeah. you roll your eyes at those people. Yeah. Uh, I have said some dumb stuff over the years, but I don't think I intentionally 
I, I don't think so, but I'm sure somebody can find something somewhere. All right, you know what to do, YouTube comments. Yeah, I mean, believe me, I'm I'm sure it's all around there. But uh, oh well, of course. I mean, I d- just had the famous ride in the D last yeah. year. Yeah, but st- that was I wouldn't categorize as uh, as a slip up. Well, it was a slip up. It was a slip up, and in the middle of the, I don't know if I ever told you this, Justin, but I think I told Bobby. Was it was uh, we were in the middle of a segment. I said that MJD had the greatest pause in sports television history his and look I, back at you yeah, yeah and i we threw it to an interview and i turned to him for people that don't know we're, mjd and i are very close we're very good friends and i looked at him and i was like really dude like you couldn't have just bought he's like what the fuck <laughs> did you want me to do <laughs> and i said how about just act like it? okay just say it to yourself in your head and you just could have coasted because twitter at the end of our, the last 10 minutes of our show was blowing up and i got guys in my ear going oh shit we got something going on. I was like, well, I'm not going to sit here and apologize for it. It was part of a discussion and it's going to be funny. And I called MJD on the way home and I said, oh my God. He goes, don't feel bad. He goes, you're going to make us famous. Yeah, that's viral marketing right there. I mean, it was great. So there you go. Tom Brady, go ahead and talk about riding the D if you want. I don't, I didn't, uh, I didn't patent that statement. It's what they tried to do in 07. Didn't work. (laughs) Ah. All right, um, so later this week, we got another episode. You guys are hopefully hitting Giants camp coming up, right? Is that accurate, Bobby? When you when you are listening to this episode, we will be watching the first minute of practice. Uh, can I just ask you this? Do guys come up to you at Giants camp, at, like players? Are they like, hey, what's up talking Giants dudes? Yeah, well, we're, we, go, we don't go into the media session at the Giants one, but we went to Detroit. You know, some of the guys would come up and, and say hello. Hmm. Yeah, Mr. Skinner, and uh, I always uh, I always yell for Ryder Anderson. So, who was Ryder Anderson exactly? Like last year, the people who said hi to us was Tom- Andrew Thomas, hmm. Barrett, Saquon, Ho- Isaiah, Isaiah Hodgins. Hodgins. Dable said hi. Dable, basically all uh, they're all the offensive linemen, uh, except for the ones that are trash, uh, like me. Yeah. Any bro hugs? No, nah, you can't hug the media. No, no, yeah, don't, no, no, no. I mean, I, we get, we bro hug Andrew Thomas when we interviewed him. Good to win, especially when you're sweaty. No, don't hug me. Oh, stop! You, you would love, you would love to lather up with a sweaty offensive. Nope. Yes, oh yeah, pathetic? you get a bro hug with the shoulder pads on. That's makes you Please. feel. It makes me feel at home. That's a badge of honor right there, Pennick. Got to change a shirt. It's, it's a whole th- becomes Thanks. a whole thing. Do you wear uh, John Boy Meaty gear out? Bobby does not. I try to, depending on my progress with laundry. Represent, man. You got to shave that shit in the back of your head, Skinner. Let's go. You want me to shave my head and be a skin? No. What? No, uh, I said. I, uh, I, like, I like plain t-shirts. Uh, you are tough. I'm going to have to talk to your fiance one time. I think you're tough. You're a tough one to crack. Sometimes. Oh, she can't. If she, I, I tell her, do not buy me any clothes because... If I don't want to wear them, I will not wear them. All right, we're back at it again at the end of the week. Everybody's camp will be in full swing. We cannot wait for more and more stories to come out. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be freaking awesome. That's all I can say. Um, Enjoy your trip to Giants Cap, gentlemen. We appreciate everybody hanging out with us. Uh, Producer Mikey, thanks so much for putting it together. For Pennick and Skinner, I am Chris Rose. We will see you on Friday here on Football Today.